What's happening, everybody? Thank you for being here at All Access Live with Kevin Rankin. Today is a really cool episode that's going to feature a couple of dynamic, remarkable, incredible musicians. But before we get started, do me a favor, go to the link below. If you've not come here from YouTube, I would love it if you open YouTube, go to youtube.com slash at Access Kevin and hit the subscribe button, like this video. You'll have access to 281 other episodes prior to this one and you can go back and you can look through some incredible episodes like uh, the brother of one of my guests uh, had uh, Mr. Rudy Sarzo on about a year ago, and it was a fascinating interview. Uh, we'll get into all that, but this wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my incredible sponsor, Five Star Guitars. Five Star is based in Beaverton, Oregon, which means that if you order anything online, you're not going to pay any sales tax. So uh, if you go to link below, if you go to fivestarguitars.com slash live you'll see that everything you see there has a discount to it. You enter the promo code of all access 15, you're gonna save 15% off everything you see. So you're gonna save 15%, you're gonna pay no sales tax, and uh, you'll be on your way to getting incredible guitars, accessories, they do lessons, they do repairs. Um, so they were voted by the NAM Association as the number one music merchant in North America. So go to fivestarguitars.com slash allaccesslive, let them know that I sent you, and again, subscribe to the channel. Now, today's guest, before I even bring them on camera, this is amazing. The wife of one of the members got me this press kit to announce this new album. They've got a new album coming out in August called Reconnected. These guys were around at the probably the most seminal time of Headbangers Ball on MTV. And I'm going to bring you back to see a little bit of what you saw in the past with some look at what they have for the future. So check out the new electronic press kit by Hurricane.
Good stuff. How you doing, Tony Cavazzo and Robert Sarzo? What's up, Monday. gents? How's everybody doing out there? Uh, at all? I'm glad to have you here. Listen, before I say anything, I should let everybody know that press kit between me uploading it and the time that we actually played it back, the audio and the video are a little out of sync. If you go to it on YouTube, it's perfectly synced up. So that's just a good taste of the sound and the look of the new hurricane, right? So it's uh, got a new single coming out in a few weeks. That Was that Behind Your Shadow? Is that the first one coming out? No, it's Rockstar Cheater is the first one coming out uh, on Friday, a week from tomorrow. Okay, fantastic. That's a barn burner, man. That one's, that one's screaming. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, we got a couple of uh, of faces that people recognize. We got Tony Cavazzo on the left here. We got Robert Sarzo on the right. In that press kit, there were a couple of new faces that we saw in Hurricane, right? So, you've got Dan Schumann and uh, Mike Hansen in the band as well, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, man, I gotta say, I would bet that, like me, most people out there that know the Hurricane name were thinking. Man, all right, so I'm on to you when we're getting to that chorus. Is that, uh, are we going to get that iconic sound? Not only does that guy nail it, but dude's got some pipes, man. He's actually, you can tell this guy is not just uh, some rookie that's never done some gigs before. So how'd you find Dan Schumann? Well, actually, uh, Andy Freeman recommended Dan Schumann to our band because we asked Andy Freeman to play the uh, M3 festival and he was not available and we needed a singer to do that show. So he recommended Dan Schumann, who was uh, playing okay. at the Tenors of Rock in Las Vegas. And uh, he, we called him and asked him if he'd be interested. He said, yeah. So he came. We auditioned with him one time. And we went and did the interview. Really? He did his homework. He's a, a total pro oh, professional singer. He knows what to do. Okay. So he gets one audition. What do you throw at a guy like that to audition for Hurricane? Well, he was thrown to the wolves, and he came out the leader of the pack. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, what, what, what kind of set list do you give somebody to learn for an audition like that? Well, it, it wasn't so much an, an audition. I, I don't like using the word audition. It was more like hang. You know, it's like okay. we, we, yeah. you know, we knew that he could sing, and it was more like, Let's vibe. Let's let's really get into the swing of things. And um, well, we we did uh, a month to you. Yeah, uh, we did uh, okay. insane. And uh, of course, the song Hurricane. And um, did we do that eighteen? The other school. Yeah, we did that. We, yeah. we practiced on that one. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, okay. maybe take what you want from the the first record. So. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and he nailed it. And the first show that we ever did was at the M3 Festival, and he he was it was very natural working with him. We all just you know felt where we should be, and you know that's a fairly nice big space. That's, that's not a nice one. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Robert when you mentioned like it was more of a hang. Here's the thing: when I watched the EPK. Any musician out there knows that you guys broke the code, right? Like this is this is you went against the grain. Everybody looks like they enjoy being on stage with each other. <laughs> the, uh, you're all smiling at each other, and like that doesn't happen in rock and roll. What's a, even here? I've got you guys sitting with each other. You're willing to be within three feet of each other, man. What's up with that? That's great. We've known each other forever. Where have you been all my life, yeah. Robert? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've known each other forever, and we're like brothers. We're musical brothers, and. And we, yeah. we have the same interests, and we're the same age, and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. Ten days apart as far as our birthdays go. Yeah. And our, both 30, our 35 life. years old. That's good. Oh, so. Yeah. We're the Zoid brothers. <laughs> the Zoid. Or, or the Voodoo. This is the Voodoo Lounge, this right? So voodoo we got the Voodoo Man the there. That we're in right now. We're in the Voodoo Lounge. Nice. In beautiful downtown L.A. on the 13th floor. Nice. I like that. But, you know, um, that's another thing, too. You guys talked about the M3 being his, you know, the first gig that Dan got to play to. Anybody that's a big rock and roll fan knows that festival in Baltimore, the, the cream of the crop and all the bands that we grew to love, you know, from the Sunset Strip era, that whole time from the 80s, uh, you know, the Headbangers Ball era. They're all playing there at M3. Some bands are out there that, uh, you know, 
maybe they're there just because they're 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 sort of reliving some memories. I've seen some performances, man. That, that you know they wish that YouTube wasn't invented, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not what I'm seeing from Hurricane, man. I mean, really, like obviously. Dan Dan knows how to take care of his boys, and you guys know how to take care of each other. You guys look like you know, like young rock star musicians, man. You're not all bloated like this guy, right? So, <laughs> but but were you? I mean, because you 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 took a long time off, right, from Hurricane. You guys all did other things. Yeah, like thirty years, something like that. Well, thirty. Yeah. Long, 30. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. Okay. Him, like, so like twenty five years. I moved out of really. I was gone. He, we didn't know how to get a hold of each other. But was it social media that brought you guys back together again? Um, no, just mutual friends that say, "Hey, I met Robert, and he wants to talk to you, and here's his number." So I called him up. I think the whole thing started connecting with either MySpace. Yeah, remember MySpace. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I remember MySpace. So. You know, we actually are able to um, to communicate with our past, which is it's, it's a lovely thing. Have you ever ha has this ever happened to any of you out there in the audience? And if it has, I think they can write in, right? They can type in questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, how many times have one of you or many of you uh, been thinking about somebody from the past, like really deep? thinking about it, and then all of a sudden, they get a message somewhere on social media, like, hey, long time, how you doing? It's happened to me many times, so, you know, yeah. we, because of social media, we're able to reconnect with all of That is great. Ironically, that's the name of our album, Reconnected. And that's about- Hey, there we go, nicely done, yeah. And it's about reconnecting I, you know, and, and people reconnecting, you know, from the past, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to think about those reconnections, right? Because um, you guys had a lot of history back, like I said, I taught the MTV days and the Headbangers Ball days, took a bunch of time off. In that time, um, I know that uh, that you both have brothers also that have been associated in the rock and roll business, right? They've gone out. Of course. Out, um, Robert, you, you know, your, your brother and I talked a little bit about his, uh, the various sort of iterations of bands that he had gone on to. Um, and one thing I talked to him about was maintaining the passion for what he was doing when adversity strikes. You know, the dude just kept going through these experiences where musicians that he was playing with would pass away. And tragedy, you know, was, was difficult. But some people don't ever come back from that. Obviously, you know, we've all had tragedy in our, tragedy in our lives. Um, was, it, was there anything sort of uh, nefarious or difficult for the, the sort of the initial break for hurricane to have you stop or was it just all right we need to go on our separate ways for a while is there any reason for it well for me it was all about family you know i had young kids at the okay. time and i wanted to be a part of their lives and they lived like in tennessee and i was living in la and i i thought to myself you know uh, i need to be a part of their lives you know and i wanted to yeah. so i moved there and and you know at that point robert and i we are already had lost are touch in touch with each other and uh you know when i came back from there um my kids were grown at the time they were growing up and i came back and uh um robert and i rehooked up you know just out of the blue sky somebody called said hey you know i got robert's number you should call him you know and i did and where did we uh meet up in beverly hills yeah that's right <laughs> nice oh, for real some club um <laughs> That we knew some uh, promoter friend of ours, and uh, okay. and I think we went up and jammed. Yeah, we hadn't seen each other for like a long time, and we just went up and did "I'm On to You" with some band that was playing there. And uh, right on, it was fun. Yeah, we that was a fun yeah, time. yeah, and we reconnected. We totally reconnected. And so, like, so Tony, you were in Nashville at the time, is that right? You were in Tennessee. I was in Memphis at the in time. In Memphis, okay. So, and you're raising your kids. Uh, I mean, I, I get it, dude. My, my two yeah. boys are, are my life, man. They're my world. And uh, one of mine went on, you know, he's pursuing music as a career. How about you? Did your kids, as they grew, did they kind of interested in following well, dad's of footsteps? Of course they are. My daughter, uh, her, I call her Beaky. She's my oldest daughter. She plays guitar and sings. She's very good. And, uh, 
Okay. My son, he he plays acoustic guitar and plays all these classical pieces and and, and he blew my mind one day. He was playing some Chet Atkins stuff and I'm like, going, "Whoa, how did you learn that?" Wow. Goes, I just study in the books, you know, and you know, they they're both not in the in the frame of mind like I was when I was their age. You know, when I was their age, I was really sure. stars and they're not doing that. They just do it for fun. You know, they don't they they don't have any aspirations of becoming major rock musicians or rock stars or however you want to how, however you want to term it but uh yeah we're you know for me when i was their age my whole goal was saying i'm reaching for the stars i want to be a major rock star and i'm so oh out. yeah did you did, i mean did, like thinking about that i mean because music itself the music industry it can be difficult it can be sorted you know so as you saw some some you know your kids practicing did you say, hey, listen, just so you know, it's really important for you to enjoy this, you know, more than just, you know, making a career out of it? I, I, they saw what I went through. So they, they made their own choice. Yeah. You know, they knew that it was tough for me and they knew that I was gone a lot. And uh, uh, they knew that uh, I had to really bust my ass to just to pay my bills. Yeah. And they knew that. And you know now they, they they have their own jobs. They're they're both good jobs that they have, and uh, you know they make good money. And uh, they're they're seem very happy. I just saw them like about two months ago. I went to Memphis to visit, and they both seem very happy about what they're doing right now. Good. And, and my daughter, she's played her guitar and sang for me, and I play guitar and she sang, and it was it was awesome. It was a great experience. That's I'll good. Speak to your she's thirty six. Oh my God, I remember yeah. when she was born. She was a baby. When she yeah. was a baby. Actually, so my son, Robert uh, Jr., is uh, he's 44. Wow. And, <laughs> That's yeah, he's 44. And, old man. And, and I remember, you know, yeah, that he was kind of like looking after Vicky. Yeah. But yeah. Tony lived in Sherman Oaks, and I lived in the downstairs apartment, and he was in the upstairs apartment. This is how connected we were that we were riding together every day. Oh, that's, so it's a, it's that's amazing. What it, that's what it took, you know, to put a brand new band together. Yeah. And we rehearsed seven days a week. But I remember, you know, my son roaming around, you know, running around, and he would end up in the studio. But, um, yeah, I uh, I spent a lot of time with my son, like, you know, Tony did, you know, with his family. And uh, I did the same thing as well. And, um, and and my son, he played drums, but you know, he, he kind of saw what I was going through yeah, in the industry yeah. and what other musicians go through. And I mean, I I, I do this full time, and he chose to take the business route. So uh, he's an entrepreneur, but uh, I'm really proud of him. He's he developed a company it's called Retune, and uh, it's called R E T U N E, and it's about health and wellness for musicians. Wow. And uh, he's got some heavyweight uh, musicians or uh, ambassadors that are using it, and like myself. So, um, yeah. So if anybody, it's in paint. It's got uh, CBD also uh, as okay. well uh, in the product, and uh, it, it works really well. It, it's great. It helps me when I'm playing. But um, you know, Tony and I, we, we when we connected back. Um, what was it like 10 years yeah. ago or 15 or 12 years ago or 12 years yeah. ago it was like we never disconnected really you know, the same energy was there it was the same spirit and you know it's just it's really natural to work with tony um and what's really interesting is because i met tony through kevin the bro okay way back uh i was living in jersey and when i came here I, you know, I just knew my brother and um, and I would go out with my brother, hang out. And that's how I met through met Kevin and then I met I met Tony. So we uh, we say, hey, let's Kevin say you guys should put a band together. So we we, uh, yeah. we did. <laughs> so, yeah. And here we are again, you know, so. It's well, it's OK, so I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I'm talking to your bro, Robert, I remember him saying that. Uh, that your dad brought you guys over at a real early age, right? From to, to Miami, is that right? Yeah, um, well, we we left communist Cuba, yeah, in 1961, September 1st. Bay uh, of pigs. The, yeah, after the uh, the Bay of Pig, um, 
So, yeah, we, we knew things were not uh, in a good place then. I mean, communism, uh, I, I, I like freedom, and I think that's why I like music. <laughs> yeah. I like rock, because to me, it's freedom. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we, we ended up in Miami. It took us about three years to get a visa. Okay. And uh, we landed in, in Miami, and then we, we were immigrant refugees. Um, we came with nothing. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah, and, and I found out recently, my mom told me that uh, when we came in that flight, it was a Pan Am airline, they were having um, a uh, program that was called the, um, uh, it, it was about children uh, that they were bringing, oh my God, it was just on the tip of my tongue. Scarface? <laughs> no, Scarface is later <laughs> on. But, um, <laughs> on the tip of your nose. But anyway. they, they were allowing children to come by themselves. Peter Pan, that, that's what it was called. Okay. Peter, yeah, Peter Pan. A lot of a lot of no musicians actually that came from Cuba, they were part of the uh the Peter Pan. Okay. Uh, but they, in other words, they came by themselves without their parents, and then the parents hopefully came later. Yeah. I was one of the lucky ones. I mean, my brother, we came uh together. So yeah, we, we had to figure out what to do. Well, how to get you know established? Were you already playing music? music then? No, no, I no, I was only six years old, and um, I started playing music, Tony. When I I was in Jersey, and my brother and I we were in front of the TV watching the Ed Sullivan Show when the, oh, uh, the Beatles first performed. Oh, wow! All oh, the girls, yeah. Are, yeah, you too, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and all the girls are inspiration right there. Yeah, yeah, it's like hey, that's the kind of job I want. <laughs> Yeah, man, I get it. I, you know how many t people have said that on this show, that that was the moment when they knew that nothing else that they had thought about doing in their life mattered, right? Yeah. And, and, and you know, so that is kind of like a drug, right? I mean, as musicians, we know that the, the way that you can affect people with their music is, is so driving. And when you get it, when you get that moment where you connect with somebody on stage, you chase it forever, right? I mean, I, I, I know for me, I want to die on stage doing what I love, right? I mean, that's just the greatest thing that you could possibly have. It's just, as long as it doesn't bum somebody out that's there, but what a great way to, you know, to celebrate our life, man, by being able to connect with people on stage. I, you know, um, I was wondering about that with, with you, Robert and, and Rudy, just having that refugee status, if it just drove you that much more too, knowing, man, we came here with nothing, right? And so we've got, the whole world ahead of us and maybe the mountain to climb is a little bit more difficult. Um, and, and so like Tony, if I remember it too, like your family was from Mexico, is that right? Actually, um, my dad was from Mexico and he, yeah. he came to the United States and joined the military at a very young age. He was 17 and oh, he, wow. he met my mom on a bus. My, he was asleep and my mom had to sit next to him on a bus on a Greyhound bus or something like that. And he woke up and they started talking. That's where he met my mom. Wow. And he would, you know, back in those days, they didn't, you know, in Georgia, for instance, where my mom lived, he would just all of a sudden show up. There was no phones or nothing. Okay. And, 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 and he would just show up. He had his army uniform on and, and my mom's family welcomed him in because he had his uniform on. He's clean cut and, you know, very, you know, intelligent and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, nice. they, they ended up getting married and, you know, I was born, I wasn't never born in a hospital. I'm probably one of the only guys that you'll ever meet that was not born in a hospital. I was born in a, in a house, you know? Nice. Yeah. Kitchen table. Yeah, on the kitchen table. Wow, really? Yeah, oh my, I think God. my dad still owes the old country doctor that, that delivered me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they're gonna come after you now. <laughs> so where did you end up growing up, Tony? I beg your pardon? Where did you end up growing up? I. I when I was young, I came from Georgia to L.A. when I was about okay. five, six years old. And I spent a long time in uh, Orange County in, in Garden Grove. And then my dad got a job down in South America for a, a company that he worked for. So we moved down to South America in, in Santa Cruz, Bolivia for about two years. Okay. And we came back in 1968. And for me, the world had changed. Yeah. In those two years, the world had changed. I mean, I, I didn't notice, you know, the hippie culture and all that kind of stuff back in 68. I didn't even know that even existed when, when I was living in South America. 
and I came back and I see all these guys with long hair and I, I started listening to all these, you know, new kind of music and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, Jimi Hendrix and my dad didn't like it. And I said, I, oh, great, I love it, you know, and, and, and you know, I, that's what inspired me to want to play. And I started because the dad was mad. I started playing <laughs> drums at the time. And, okay. and Carlos, we, me and Carlos always shared a room when we were growing up. And, and uh, he played guitar and I played drums. And But I was always dabbling around with his guitar because I wanted to learn about it as much as I could. And, and yeah. uh, you know, eventually I switched over to rhythm guitar and me and him had a little band called Speed of Light. And uh, oh. we were in school. You know, we were still in school. We had a band called Speed of Light. And, uh, uh, you know, our bass player left to go on vacation with his family. And he, he left his amp and his bass over the, our friend's house where we rehearse, our drummer's house. His name is Perry. And, and okay. I picked up the, you know, who's going to play bass? Oh, Carlos goes, I'm not playing bass. And the drummer goes, I can't play bass. And I, okay, I guess it's me. So I picked up the bass and I fell in love with it right away. And the band, wow. man, it sounds way better with you playing bass and i go okay then i'm gonna stick with the bass nobody told you right that the bassists are not getting the chicks right that, that yeah well <laughs> i didn't even think about that but i just <laughs> fell in love with the instrument i felt in love with the power when, you, when you're playing yeah. you can feel the power on your backside and and, yeah. and it's just like a real warm feeling and you can feel it all the way across the stage the rumble of it and i just love that feeling you know it's just, it's just something that it's a part of me yeah, I just can't get enough of it. So at, at that point, in speed of light, then you're playing. Yeah. You're, I, I just asked him if he still had that bass. No, from, no. I, I still got my, my one that I bought, but yeah. not, not, not my friend Bruce's bass that he left. You know, That'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but do you still have your first guitar, Robert? What's that? You still have your first. You still have your first guitar? <laughs> no, I don't even know what happened to it. Actually, uh, we ordered that the first guitar we were in New Jersey through Spiegel magazine. Remember back in the oh. day it was like the Amazon of back yeah. in the day, but you know, you fill out the form and you throw it in yeah. the mailbox and then all of a sudden a guitar shows up uh you know, like two months later. Nothing like Amazon How? now you get in a couple of days or overnight. But yeah, my brother and I we, we share that guitar and um uh, we didn't know what we were doing with it, and um, and we couldn't afford. You, you still know. don't. <laughs> I'm still trying to tune up the damn guitar, uh, but no, I don't have that guitar. Uh, no, it's I don't even know what happened. I probably drill and and probably try to make like some kind of a uh, you know a way of talking a lot more in the fret. I think we took it apart. I used to take all kinds of stuff apart. Do you remember that feeling though, man, when you waited two months for that guitar and the mail shows up, you've got that, uh, that box. Cause now we get used as Americans and consumers, right? We just get stuff every day. You get stuff in the mail, but remember waiting two months, yeah. and the magic instrument shows up in the mail, how that feeling was, right? Like just the world is ahead of you at, at that point. But, uh, you know, and, and speaking of guitars, you got some pretty rocking looking guitars on the wall. And you told me a little bit about it before. Okay. Why don't you tell people? This is Robert's uh, voodoo guitar. Okay. It's made by Sawtooth uh, Musical Instruments. And Robert plays this exact guitar. But this one here is made out of all black uh, corks. My wife makes these things. And it takes really? a month to make them. Each one. Okay. And this is the first one that she made. It's an actual P bass, which is what I normally play. You know, yeah. it's what I learn how to play on. And she copied my bass and, and made one just like it. And they're life size. They're, they're actual size of a real guitar. And then we got a B the right behind me right here that she made. Oh, sweet. And she's working on Eddie Van Halen's guitars right now, which is a very difficult project. And, you know, she's got to do the paint, like the Frankenstrat paint on it. Oh, really? Okay. Wow. She's got it. She's going to figure out how to do it. And it's going to be, it's going to be awesome when she gets those done. You know? Yeah. Mel, are you, are you commissioning those? Are you selling them? Or what are you doing? Uh, not yet. I'm going to wait till I'm done with the three uh, Van Halen guitars. I'm doing yeah. the black and white, the, um, uh, the Frankenstrat and... What's this? Oh, the, the Kramer? The Kramer one. I'm doing oh. all three of those. And then once I get those done, I'm going to try to figure out how to market them. 
That's so cool, you know, man. I'm um, right yeah, there and I'm looking at the P base here, the headstock. It looks like the real, uh, you know, Tony space. I mean, it, it's beautiful wow. craftsmanship, uh, down to, you know, the uh, the gloss on it, the stain. This is just like my uh, signature guitar. Wow. I mean, it's identical. It's a, it's really a wonderful. They're piece. works of art, though. They're not playable. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know what? I mean, honestly, Mel, you could have a booth there at the NAMM show. Yeah, and you could start yeah, just, you know, yeah. but, but I, well, guys, if you're watching, uh, I, as I mentioned, the sponsor of the show is Five Star Guitars right there. So maybe Five Star can actually pick up uh, some of Mel's customs and we'll, uh, you know, they'll be, they'll be shown. I had longtime guitar tech for Eddie Van Halen on the show. Right after Eddie passed away, we talked a little bit about uh, the, his time with Eddie, you know, and it's amazing to me how people came out of the woodwork and talked about influences, right? Yeah. And so it makes me think a little bit about, about you guys and your brotherhood. Um, you know, another interview that I had too, Stella Parton, Dolly Parton's sister, incredibly talented. She had 42 albums out. She had a record out, record deal by the time she was 17. But Dolly's name got out there, and it just so happened that people didn't get the, the household name of Stella Parton, right? And we talked about Stella and her contributions and her music, and but family was a big part of it, right? Her contribute, her, uh, her the influence from her family, and for you guys, it's inevitable, right? That both of you guys have you know like brothers that happen to uh, have. Uh, you know, made some household names, right? Between like Quiet Riot and, and yeah. you know, Rudy's Rudy, Rudy example. Them. <laughs> well, well, I'm wondering, does it feel like you have to live in that shadow a little bit, or do you uh, guys feel confident in your identity? I I don't feel that. I used to, but not anymore. You know, I yeah. You know, my career is what it is. You know, I we, yeah. I still pay dues as Robert. We still pay dues, and uh, you know, we play with other bands. You know, I played for years in cover bands. And uh, I played with for years in, in the tribute bands. Yeah, you had Aerosmith, right? I still pay dues, and and yeah. you know, I'm going to pay, pay dues probably in Hurricane and in, in any band I play with. It, I look at it as paying dues, and that's my career. My career is what it is right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, both you guys did tribute things, right? And you know, Aerosmith was, yeah. was Tony. You were in the Aerosmith tribute. And Robert, you were doing an Idol, a Billy Idol gig, right? What's yeah. that? You're in the Billy Idol. At, at yeah, Idol. it's called Idol Lads, Idol, right. and uh, fu funny story is because I was working playing uh, in a three-piece band with the bass player Stephen McGrath that's been with Billy Idol for 20-something years. He's the left-handed uh, bass player, and uh, we're doing uh, just a club date around in L.A. just to keep our chops up, and uh, this gentleman, Matthew Eberhardt, Stay, uh, gets on stage and uh, we do a couple of Billy Idol songs because, you know, Stephen is in the Billy Idol band and uh, so anyway, this guy looks like him, he pretends to be like him, we're like, wow, this is kind of weird and trippy, <laughs> but uh, but then he, you know, he uh, asked me if I wanted to do some other date uh, with him and uh, so I, yeah, I play with him once in a while and uh, uh, it's a lot of fun, it's a nice catalog. You know, we're working musicians, and a lot of musicians, um, you know, if, if you want to just make a career out of it, um, just got to, you know, a catalog of music that you really enjoy. Besides doing your originals, you can always play other people's music as well. Well, man, anybody that has an issue with that doesn't understand wanting to be a working musician, right? Because if you're if you're a studio guy, you're playing other people's music. If you're playing, you know, you're getting a hired gun situation, you're playing other people's music. If anybody has a problem with a tribute thing or playing the cover band or whatever, as far as I'm concerned, as a musician, I want to play, right? I'm on stage and I want to play music, man. And you get that connecting. And another thing and, and also, uh, Kevin, that I wanted to add to that is, you know, for, for musicians that are considering like, oh, wow, you know, this possibility of doing, you know, a cover band, whatever you're playing, always be your best. Always do your homework. <laughs> Learn exactly how you want to play and be your best. Pretend that you're playing with with Billy Idol. For, yeah. You know, so you got to be a tech counselor. You have to really give it all you got. And then uh, it doesn't matter what song you're playing. If you're playing something by Elmo Smith, Zeppelin, always be your best. Yeah. You know, shoot for the start. 
Yeah. Well, I'm, so you you mentioned that. Um, one sec. You know, I, I'm uh, I'm hearing that there's a little bit of static. I'm just going to switch microphones here for a second. Okay, yeah. Yeah. We hear it too. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a distortion pedal that we have going on in here. <laughs> <laughs> the ground. Let's see. It, I'm betting it's the audio input here, and I, I so I just moved back to Portland, Oregon yesterday, and I don't have my whole setup, and I've been in the studio all day, so I didn't get a chance to do my interface. So I apologize for uh, static. Is that any of you guys? Better now, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll keep my fingers crossed and hope that. That works. I was just talk, talking about playing other people's music. Robert, For you had a good stint with your bro playing with Jeff Tate, right? You were doing the Queensryche gig for a bit. Yeah, with, uh, well, it was still called uh, uh, Queensryche. That's what you're talking about, the uh, Jeff Tate Yep, band. yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah so, he, so man, how was so. that? It, you know, like coming in to play the Queen's Right tunes. I mean, you you're playing the Garmo parts for the most part, right? So yeah, um, I, I was so, on the, on the Garmo parts. Uh, well, you're working with the, the gentleman that wrote the songs along with the band. Yeah, and um, so you you have to really kind of adapt to his consciousness of emotionally what the songs are about and how to perform the songs in a certain way. Uh, for myself, I had to kind of adapt to that style of playing, um, which means, you know, more playing on the beat, not so much of the swing. You know, different styles of music, uh, you have to adapt. It doesn't matter. And uh, it, it was great. Uh, I did it for, uh, well, we two were years, up for about two years. Yeah. And and, it, and then it got okay. really interesting because Jeff Jeff uh, said, "Hey, why don't you bring Hurricane along on the tour to open up, you know, for the band?" So I was doing both shows, and um, so we were all touring together for um, about two and a half, three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were out. Uh, wow. yeah, we did a lot of tours together, and uh, for me that was a thrill because now I'm doing what three hours of music, and yeah. Um, but and it was great to play Double my dipping. own music, Tony, our music, because you know there's a difference when you play your own soul, you play your own sure. uh, consciousness of creation, and, um, and 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 that was a lot of fun to have, you know, Hurricane and Mike Hansen. I mean, uh, our drummer has been with us for 15 years. He's right? been, he, you know, he's wow. been with us the original drummer Jay Shelling. Yes. Okay. So he's the drummer. Mike, it was the same rhythm. When we were out with Queens, right? Uh, it was in 2014. Yeah, yeah, that time ago. Oh, that's it, what it is. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so so you essentially you had almost all of Hurricane backing up Jeff doing Queens, right? Yeah, yeah, Tony, yeah. were you were you, okay? Uh, man, that dumb. I mean, the songs are amazing, right? That like you were. I'm sure you were doing My Crime and Empire and all those. You know, big concept. Yeah, it was the anniversary, the 25th anniversary of Mind Crime, and and uh, yeah, it was good. I mean, we we learned all the parts. I mean, we um, we were really shooting for the same quality that was in the albums, and we were singing live. Nothing was tracked live. We were not on a grid. We were not on, on the click click track or almost wherever. Everything was live, and That's crazy. Uh, so that was kind of cool too. To uh, to be able to you know have the keyboards, the other guitar player uh, Kelly playing the the guitar, uh, it was great. Yeah, the Jeff is a real pro to uh, tour with. That was a lot uh -huh. of fun uh, to be on the band, to be on the road, you know, with all of them. And he was really sure. great to us as an opening yeah. act. He was really nice, you know. He shared his bus with us. So did he? Was, I, oh yeah. I, I, yeah. These are good sto good stories to hear, right? I mean, they, they like during that time. Of course, you know there was always the tension between the you know the Queensrÿche, you know some of the guys in the Queensrÿche doing one thing, and and Jeff, you know, doing his thing. And you know, as fans of those bands, you're like, man, can't you guys just all get along, right? And I think you and I chatted with you guys before we went on about you're never going to please everybody. Right. There's always going to be somebody that says, well, it's not 
whatever. It's not, uh, you know, like Queen's Rack if it's not DeGarmo or it's not, you know, if it's not Queen's Rack, if it's not Jeff Tate. Well, Jeff Tate, the voice of the, the music, maybe, but um, Todd Latore does a pretty damn good job of it, too. Right. So and there's I think there's room for all that. But, um, you know, that does that kind of brings us to the, the sort of conversation about, um, you know, Kelly Hansen going off and doing his thing with Foreigner. Right. He's been like people were saying it's not Foreigner with Kelly Hansen without Lou Graham, but sure sounds like foreigner, you know, <laughs> you know, when you're doing it. And I think, again, you're not going to please everybody. If you close your eyes and you listen to a band and you're hearing the iconic sound, that's pretty much it. When they, when you hear Dan doing your EPK, you can hear that that's Dan's voice, but it sounds, it has all the elements of everything you wanted to hear from those old hurricane tunes. And then, you that can sing more. those really well too. Yeah, you know, yeah, great, you, like fantastic job singing those. I I got excited, man. Just listening to the EPK today, I'm thinking, yeah, I cannot wait to see this guy live. So, when do we? Are, are you you guys have some shows coming up this summer? Um, not yet. You know, we're okay. You know, we're we're everybody's kind of busy right now doing other shows with other bands, and okay. Uh, uh, you know, we just want to get the album out right now and, and 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 then, you know, get on the road after it's released in September. So after September, we'll see where things go. You know, it's all up to the people, you know. Yeah. If, if, we're, if we're out there in their city and we're playing, which we hope we are, we can't wait to see them because we take pride in meeting our fans. We, you know, we, like at the Rock Timber Festival that we did, we went out and, and, and to our T-shirt booth. The whole band did. And we were shaking hands with everybody. We we're helping sell the shirts and everything like that. And that was great. You know, yeah. we were signing autographs. And the, the people love that stuff. Yeah, not, they do. We're not going to sit in our green room. We're going to go out and, and hang with our fans and hang with the people that came to our show. You know, they come that's, to hang with us and we want to hang with them. We are it's great people. respect. <laughs> we're blue collar. We like yeah. our people. You yeah. know? We well, like you know what, man? I mean, if it weren't for them, right, we'd all be sitting at home, right? So yeah, it's great yeah. that you guys recognize that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, to, it, again, that the title reconnected. You know, you're connecting with your fans out there. You're showing them yeah. that I honor you for being here. So when when somebody comes out and they they catch a hurricane show and they get a chance to to meet their idols, Robert and Tony, um, and you're you're you've got your merch there. Do you uh do you find a lot of musicians that come up to you just like sort of in awe of your your playing and and pick your advice for guitar and bass we get that yeah we get a lot of people that come up that are that are uh young musicians and we try to inspire them we want you know young musicians to to uh get ahead and and make money yeah. and we're fortunate to be able to do that robert and i we, we're very fortunate and we count our blessings every day that we can do this for a living because there's really no better way in my opinion to make a living and uh, yeah if you can do it and make enough money to survive and you're, you got the freedom, like Robert said, to express yourself. And uh, it, it's it's really the best feeling ever. It's not work at all. It, it's, you know, when you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And, and yeah, man. Yes, sir. Well, you know, you you know should... what it's like. You know, you, you play in <sighs> three bands, but you know what it's like. So, I, Man, I'm so grateful, dude. Every single, especially, yeah, we figured this out, right, during the pandemic when it all went away. And we were stuck at home, like not being able to do what we absolutely were born on this planet to do. What did you guys spend your time doing, Robert? No, you, Robert, you first. Oh, what? Yeah, he wants to know what you did during COVID. I was writing. And also, we, you see, we were already working on the album uh, right before COVID, uh, you know, really spread and took over the world. So, we took that time and said, okay, let's keep doing what we're doing. And I live in a yacht and I'm at the uh, marina and I just totally stay away from everyone except my wife and my three little doggies. But uh, nice. I just got, you know, deep into Pro Tools and we were working on writing and recording the album. That's what we did. We stayed productive and uh, obviously there was no live shows. Uh, right. You know, I, another reason also that we don't have any dates right now booked is because we were we've been recording and writing and recording and getting the album ready. So 
now that we know exactly the direction. It's an 11-song album. There, there was a lot of material okay. in there and components to really analyze. Um, with lyrics, we were writing the lyrics. We wanted to write lyrics that meant something. We just didn't want to just be writing silly lyrics. So um, people that like to really read lyrics, um, I think, uh, are they going to be printed on the vinyl also? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, will. Yeah. We're coming up. Oh, vinyl. sweet. And, you know, it's just like in the old days, you can open up, it's, you know, all the uh, literature in there. You can read the lyrics. We actually really uh, put a lot of time in, in the writing of the songs. And they have stories. They have meaning. Uh, Rockstar Cheater has his story. Uh, Hands of Soul, really deep song. Uh, that also has its own story. And uh, I'll tell you real quick, Hand of Souls is about what people went through during COVID. And what people go through, it's about life. It really is. Um, uh, what else we have in there? This cut. Disconnected. Disconnected is about the reality of everybody on their phones all the time and not really communicating like like humans yeah. should. And AI, know? yeah, people but, rely on AI and uh, instead of using their brains, you know, for creating, uh, they're like, oh, well, let me take a shortcut. Uh, so that's, a, you know, it's about what's happening nowadays, about being connected and disconnected in the, uh, in the uh, digital world. Uh, what are the other songs? Uh, well, we did we did our version of Queens Under Pressure, and, and oh wow, it came out really really good. You know, we're really proud of that. We got a video yeah with yeah. that song probably right before the album releases. We're going to release that video, and uh, sweet, and it, it, that's a, an incredible song. So oh yeah, you know, and it, it yeah. right now it means a lot for us to play that song because that's kind of what everybody's going through everybody's going under pressure right now mm -hmm. and you've heard it on yeah. a million times and and uh, it, it's a beautiful song it really is we have a lot of interesting uh intense footage also in that video so uh, i can't can't wait man i mean sure i'm sure they can go to the the hurricane rocks official uh, hurricane official rock band.com will probably have links to the video there, right? Yeah, so, yeah, okay. uh, when, uh, when it's ready, okay, yeah, and it'll be released the 18th of August. Oh, fantastic! All right, so yeah, we've got uh, just about yeah, four weeks between now and then. Um, the uh, you know what, and I'm glad that Mel spoke up because one thing I was thinking about, Robert, you were talking about uh, you and your wife hold up on the yacht, you had your, your dogs. We really probably should talk about the MVPs of, of our relationships, right? I mean, having supportive spouses and people in our lives is key, man. I mean, so they don't get a lot of the recognition, right? When you guys are on stage and you're, you're uh, you know, getting rock stardom thrown at you, the people that are in our lives that are actually those huge supports behind. So so big props to you, Mel, and, and Robert, to your wife as well for some, Mel, supporting those musicians. She... she She's incredible. She really is. She's smart and she knows how to deal with people. She negotiates for us. And oh man, she, I, you know, we wouldn't be here without her. We wouldn't be. That's uh, man. Yeah. Uh, like I said, even prior to going live, hang on to that and, and definitely don't let a day go by that you don't let her know how important she oh, is man, to we you. We all do. We yeah. all do. That, it's, you, you were talking about doing this Queen tune. Um, you've done incredible covers in the past. I mean, um, I'm 18. The yeah. Alice Cooper tune that you guys did was such a cool take on that song. So I'm thinking about classic rock. Who were your big inspirations? You know, obviously Cooper and, and Bowie, but but who else were inspiring to you guys? Well, for me, you know, of course Led Zeppelin. Um, of course, uh, John and Twistle is a bass player from The Who, and uh, you know, I listened to uh, I liked Billy Cox from the Hendrix era when the Band of Gypsies. I really liked him. I, I, you know, lo loved his tone and his feel. It was great. But really, the best influence I ever had was probably McCartney, you know, from the Beatles. You know, I listen to his stuff, and I still do. And, you know, he's he's the guy. He's the best. Yeah, he did all right for himself, too, didn't he? Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, don't, don't tell him my comment about the bass players not getting chicks, all right? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Robert? I would say, well, let me break it down into categories. As a guitarist, I would say uh, Segovia. 
uh, I, you know, uh, Chet Atkins, Roy Buchanan, uh, Jeff Beck, uh, Jimmy Page, George Harrison, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix. I, I saw Jimi Hendrix perform live. Uh, wow, Brent, really? Brent Funk. Um, oh, boy, there's so many. Uh, Carlos Santana. Uh, oh. Peter Green. Uh, you know, he, and then as a writer, uh, producing, uh, composing, I, I, I love the Beatles production. I love uh, the Beach Boys, uh, the Mamas and the Papas. Um uh, uh, a lot of different stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean the uh, Eagles. I mean, there's so much great catalog of music in the past when we were growing up that um, it's yes. just endless. I mean, David Bowie, um, uh, Tom, uh, okay, name, uh, T-Rex with Mark Bolin. Mark Bolin, yeah. yeah. Oh you yeah. Know, and one thing I'll never forget, Kevin, is I went to see uh, T-Rex, Mark Bolin, and. Uh, Three Dog Night, also, I love Three Dog Night. And for some reason, the PA did not work that night. I grew up, you know, in Miami, in Florida. Um, and uh, so anyway, I I really wanted to meet Mark Boland. So I'm walking around the area, the arena, and, and I see Mark on the side, you know, behind the gate. And I kept calling his name. And I, what was that, like 15, 14 years old? And the guy came over, and we talked. And I'll never forget how kind he was to, to doing that. I mean, great songwriter. Uh, if you look him up, I mean, you know, I'm talking about the audience. I mean, the guy was brilliant. And, uh, yeah. Well, and I got and I, did that probably Bowie. I got to hang out with Bowie in Florida. Wow. In the clubs. Um, his uh, he was hanging around with my groupies in Florida, and they was you know, they kind of introduced me like, "Hey, Robert, come meet you know David," you know. So. Uh, uh, that was kind of fun, uh, but yeah, it just you know, I, I believe that you know, when musicians are kind to other you know young musicians that are looking up to them, it's really important. Um, I love Queen. I saw Queen play in Florida. Uh, I saw the Who. Wow. I mean, it was great music. Uh, so I have yeah. to say one player influenced me because when I'm you know composing and writing and thinking of music, it's all these catalog of material, and I know that it happens to Tony too, because yeah. we talk about it. We have sure. we have the same roots, and um, we, we kind of relate, you know, when we're creating and, and writing as a band. Uh, but I'll tell you, Hurricane, uh, and, and with Daniel Schumann, it's been a lot of fun for us to write and compose with him. The guy's really good, and so is Mike Hansen, our drummer. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Who knows to that? You know, I mean, this is this is by no means a, a slight to Dan at all because I I can tell the guy's got pipes. He sings his ass off. If uh, you know, if you could go back in time, right? You just find one guy in all of history that becomes the front man for Hurricane, right? So you know, with a, a live or dead, who could? Uh, and so Dan, aside from you, right? So Dan, we know you're the guy. But if you picked one other person in history, do you have anybody that you think, oh, you know, Freddie Mercury would have been the guy or whatever? For me, it would have to be Paul Rogers. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I love Paul Rogers. And, you know, I forgot. Who, who ended up singing for Queen, right? So. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention, um, as a bass player, one of my biggest influences was also Geezer Butler. Oh, I yeah. cannot forget Geezer. Oh, right. He, he was incredible. Nice. I've seen him play a few times, and, and I was just blown away every time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Under, underrated for sure. Yeah. A lot of great singers. How about you, Robert? Like Freddie Mercury. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, yeah. Adam Lambert. I mean, he can sing. Yeah, he can. totally can. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, there's a reason both of those guys got the Queen gig, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got an amazing voice, also. Uh, yeah. It's you know, and even, even George Michael, he's not really a rock singer, but he's an incredible. Yeah. Singer. Yeah. He had an incredible. One of the. Well, well, both, I feel like, you know, the purity of his voice and, you know, and, and Freddie's voices. I mean, if you listen to the isolated vocals, both of those guys had the most pure voice. Exactly. It was just it, goosebumps, right? Yeah. You know, man, some, uh, there's a band that I'm just loving that's been around since 98. 
and I, I just, I'm, I'm crushing on them now, man. Their singer is one of the great guitarists, and his voice. Um, are you hip to Big Rack? Do you guys know that band? Big Rack. Yeah, Big Wreck. They're a band from Can. Well, he was a Boston Berkeley guy. The band kind of took off in Canada, but I just saw him in Toronto uh, about a month ago. They're, they just finished up a year uh, an East Coast tour. Okay. But the guy looks like sort of late era Soundgarden Cornell. He looks yeah, like Cornell. Sings sounds so much like him. He sounds so much like Chris, but he's a ripping guitarist too. So so check him out, man. I'll I'll send you guys a link. I, I, you know, it's it's weird for me to get so excited about a band, you know, that I'm just consuming everything from. They're them. called Big Wreck. Um, and, yep, okay. yeah, check them out. I'll, I'll I'll send you guys both the link, man. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's good stuff. But uh, but I bring that up because you know they got brand new material, and like you guys with this record coming out next month, you found a way. From what I heard, in a little too, like you've got a way that people's your legacy is made you know it, like all the people that knew hurricane they recognize your sound but then there's a modern sound to it even the, the you talk about the, the writing behind this there are modern day times you know you're talking about issues that people dealt with with covid so do you kind of feel like in your writing that you're going to try and bring everything we, current we robert talked about this and we always wanted to create a modern version of hurricane and uh yeah we didn't want to do the same 80s sound we didn't want to do that at all we wanted to come up with something fresh and new and and different and uh i think i think we did that you know mm -hmm. we, we we came up with some really cool stuff and you know playing under pressure which is an incredible song not not many bands would even want to attempt to play that song but we are and and uh we're yeah. great on the record and then some of the other stuff that we played uh, we got another song called behind your shadow which is incredible ballad really dark really good heavy you know so we really liked that one that was one of my favorite songs on the record so i'm glad you put that the epk because that yeah, yeah that is a massive sound EPK. yeah behind your shadow yeah that's a great yeah. one man. you uh and dan if uh, on, the, on the vocals yeah, he kills he it feels it yeah yeah that, yeah, that's got to feel really good, right? Uh, I mean, he, yeah. this is the first recording yeah. you guys have come out with in, like, what, 20 years? Oh, yeah, probably. Uh, the last album I played on with uh, with Robert, anyway, was uh, Over the Edge. You know, and that was, like, in the late 80s. Wow, yeah, man. So that's, <laughs> that was, that's a long time yeah. ago. That, that was before pagers. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, you, you know, cell phone, you know. <laughs> you hope you had enough that, to call that, somebody. Forget about cell phones. There was no painter. <laughs> that's kind of how I, I mean, really, looking at that point in time, I felt like that was maybe the biggest reason that more people didn't get to find out about Hurricane. Because it was right at the end of what rock and roll was doing before everything changed with the Seattle sound, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, like, oh, like Over the Edge came out, and then you had, there was a little transition, like Skid Row was kind of fading out, and then boom, Nirvana, right? Nirvana changed it. Then it was over. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, did you guys have that kind of resentment towards oh, that I, sound, realizing? I, I love Dave Grohl. I love Dave. Grohl. Yeah. Fantasy. How can you yeah. not? Right. And he's such a great guy. Yeah. I've never met him in person, but just judging from the interviews I've seen him on and, and the documentaries about his band and everything, he, he's a great guy. He really cares. He cares about his musician yeah. family, his music. He cares, and he, he he took the hard road to get there. It wasn't. It wasn't right. like an easy trip for him just because mm -hmm. he was in Nirvana. He had to start all over again. Yeah. And, and he, yeah, I'm, I'm reading reading his book right now. Right? Yeah. He talks about that. Right? It's a, you know, Tony, you brought that up, man. A family again. You know, family seems to be just a really a recurring theme with you guys. That's important. You know, my kids love what yeah. I do. And they support me. They know that I'm not never home. I'm gone a lot, and and uh, they they understand. You know. Yeah, um, and the wife's too. And, yeah, you know, uh, it's just yeah, it's our work. It's what you know how we do it. We have to go out there and uh, and also be part of our other family, which is the audience. We care about the audience. Yeah, because really if there was no audience, then we can't do what we're doing. And to us, it's really important. Yeah. And that's another reason we like to go out and meet our audience because we want to we want to be a part of them. We want to you know. 
we know what it feels like to be on the other side and being looking at, at, at the stage and go, wow, yeah, that's, you know, that's I a want cool to do guitar. That. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool guitar. Yeah. You know, and then when you go there out into the public and you meet them, uh, it's, we enjoy it. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah, and I like for the young people, the young uh, upcoming musicians to pick my brain, young bass players, you know, pick my brain. What kind of gear do I use? Whatever, you know, I, and I'm happy to answer. Yeah. You know, I, I I, I encourage them. I want them to have the encouragement to go home and, and practice and learn something and, and study, you know, with either YouTube or whatever, or in books or whatever, the old school way. And, uh, and, and be in a band, you know, I learned on, on stage. That's how I learned how to play on stage. You know, I, it was on the job training for me. You know, I, I never yeah. really took lessons or anything like that. I just learned how to play on stage. Yeah. You, know, you got to do it. You got to really, um, uh... And that's the difference also when Tony and I, we were growing up, uh, that there was a lot of options of places that you can play. You can play almost every night and get paid. And nowadays, uh, you know, it's, it's challenging because it's not that many venues that uh, young players can perform. And really, that's how you that's true. build your chops is by experimenting on stage. And if you do make a mistake, do, do the same mistake two or three times, and you can turn around and tell the other guys, jazz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the that, thing I learned. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice. Yeah, but don't do it again. I think I thought you're supposed to point at the drummer and say it's their fault. No, that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if the drummer I, makes you know he gets off time. I say I say the same thing. That's kind of jazzy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right, yeah, you, you gotta you, you gotta make it look like you meant to do it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. listen, yeah. um, I'm doing Billy Cobb for I like that Billy Cobb oh, that you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. God, yeah, amazing drummer. That's not even fair, man. What that guy can do. But I, uh, well, I gotta say one, one, a couple of things. I'm, I mentioned earlier on the, the podcast, you guys look like you're having a great time. I mean, just seeing you two together, smiling and joking with each other. Well, you know, but we like to like, have fun on stage. You know, me and Robert, we yeah. keep on each other on stage. We laugh. I hit his guitar and I make him make a mistake or whatever. You know, we just have fun. Hey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. As it should be. Man. I, 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 I it's fun it's to see, fun like, to see you know, you guys showed up, you dressed rock and roll, you got the whole backdrop, which is color coordinated here, and uh, I just, I want to thank you guys so much for sharing this record, man. I, I think people, if you didn't get this in the beginning, go to hurricaneofficialrockband.com. There's a link that you can actually get the pre-order for the record, which comes out August 14th. Our website, the link's all there. Get your pre-order. Right, yeah. And you can order t-shirts, patches. But, you know, if we really want to be out there and play the new songs out, and it will be terrific uh, if our fans and audience and new fans and friends can, uh, you know, just uh, mention to the uh, the promoters in their area, like, hey, we want to see Hurricane. We want, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Come back into our area. I mean, back in the 80s, we were doing arenas with our maiden, Cheap Trick, right. uh, Striper, right? yeah. Mary Moore. Uh, yeah, we were now you on for a while. We were on tour yeah. every year, like over 200 shows, more like. Wow. We were gone for nine months. Yeah. I came home and I had a baby son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's great. You know, rehearse and write and record. We never stopped. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and we were blessed that we were able to do that. But we really uh, we we want to go out again and uh, and do it all over again, and you know, playing the new song. So yeah, it will be wonderful, you know, to get everybody's support and love. And uh, so we, we can, love them. We can do what we love. Do you hear that, Dave Grohl? Dave Grohl, get Foo Fighters to uh, to bring Hurricane on the tour with you and uh, sell all the merchandise. I mean, somebody, somebody get the, the Dave's publicist to copy and reconnect it so those guys can get out there and tour. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. 
you got great if uh yeah, great uh, band that's if, solid man i would i would love to see it i will sign up on the updates for the website i know that you've got to sign up on your hurricaneofficialboxband.com for uh for updates so at least i can find out when you've got shows coming up august 14th is the release of the reconnected album and uh, so, folks, if you got here late, go check out the link below. Pre-order that record and uh, check out this lineup. It's amazing. Dan Shunish, Mike Hansen, Tony Cabazzo, Robert Sarzo. I am so grateful to have you here. My apologies for the static. And, and uh, Mel, thanks for putting it together and for putting up with all the crazy static that's happening here. But, uh, but gentlemen, you look great. You sound great. I can't wait to see you play live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'd like to meet you in person, too. We're going to do it, man. I'm going to jump up and push my Canson out of the way. I'm on to play. I'm on, I'm on to you. Uh, man, thank you guys again, buddies. You, I, I'll be back. I'll be back for sure. Thanks to uh, Mary Paul for introducing us, Robert. It's a, my pal Mary sent me videos from your show the other night, and that's how I reached out to you. I said, oh, I just got done doing my show in L.A. on Saturday night, and she said, I was just hanging out with Robert Sarso. No way, man. So that's, that's how this got, got going. So, 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 so thanks to Mary for connecting us, and thanks to all of you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Keep, uh, keep your eyes on all of us. Anytime. 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 Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Thank you guys thank both. You Tony, Tony, Robert Sarzo, thank you guys. Have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you soon.